tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. Hello and welcome to the Revolutionary Radio Project. I'm your host, Rob Skiba. And uh, tonight I'm going to have Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer on and possibly Jaron from the Jaronism YouTube channel. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, we came back from a trip to California about, what was that, about a week ago now? And um, so I figured we'd, I, we'd talk about it tonight. So, uh, hey guys, you there? I am here. Hey. Hello, so, me too. <laughs> all right. So, um as I understand, this this whole trip basically started with some communication that happened with you, Mark, right? Some people contacted you? Yeah. Initially, what happened was back in November, uh, there was a little podcast that interviewed me. And it was not necessarily a hostile interview, but they wanted to convince me that the Earth wasn't flat, you know, that it was it was still a globe. And it was called Ono, Ross, and Carrie with Carrie, Poppy, and Ross Blocker, I think. And we went at it for a couple hours, and then finally they they gave up, and we went our separate ways. What I didn't know was the flat earth, like the marble in the proverbial paint can, was still rattling around, and <laughs> it just irritated them to no end. Because that's a good that's a good analogy, actually. I can I can just hear the sound right now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, it, it's true, though. I mean, you can't shake that thing out. You've got to resolve it one way or the other. Either you have to live with it or you you have to come to some sort of uh, revelation. And Ross was part of a, a debunking group called the IIG. And he contacted me early this year and said, hey, uh, we're thinking of going down to the, the Salton Sea to shoot some uh, some curvature tests with, with you know, long distance photography. Would you like to come? And I said, absolutely not. I think it's a horrible idea. I don't think even you should go because it's, you're, you know, it's a really horrible place. It's it's way out uh East of Los Angeles, a couple hours. You know, when you get out there, technically, you're the same, you might as well go to San Diego. It's the same distance to Los Angeles to San Diego. You're way out there. It's a dead sea. I said, no, I'm not going. And I said, in fact, I said, look, contact. There's a bunch of great people in Los Angeles. You know, the, the Flatters community is really strong out there. Here's some people. Con, you know, I talked to, to tied them into Aaron Greshock and some guys out there. Go do that. And I didn't hear from him anymore. It's like, okay, good. I don't have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> and then, then what happened was, um, coincidentally, a National Geographic was looking for things to do. Uh, they had contacted me and they said, hey, is there any other events? Because they had missed the conference, you know, down in Raleigh. Uh, they were they were late to the game. I go, guys, I don't know where you where you've been, but you can't, you know, they, we got nothing coming up. We got the Edmonton thing in Canada, and we've got the thing in Denver. And they go, and and but I had to mention it. I should have just kept my mouth shut. But uh, you know, blessing in disguise, I suppose. So I said, okay, there is something happening in Los Angeles because they wanted something in New York or Los Angeles because they're based in both those places. And they said, oh right, okay. So I put them in touch. So I, I connected all of them. The IIG, National Geographic, Aaron's group, connected them all together. And then I stepped away again and I said, okay, I don't have to deal with this. And then Patricia and I happened to be up in Toronto for the uh, Hot Docs Film Festival where they were debuting the Behind the Curve documentary. And sure enough, while we were um, at this place downtown where we were staying, they, um, National Geographic called me and they said, hey, I know we know you don't want to go to this salt and sea thing, but how would you like to go? It's like, oh, really? And I go, and I just I just laid it on. I go, well, you're gonna have to fly me out there. I'm not I'm not gonna fly my myself for this stupid test. They go, oh yeah, and they called my bluff. It's like, oh, so that's what happened. They uh, they then then the, then then everything just started snowballing. Then all of a sudden, uh, uh, the LA group is like, okay, who can we who should we bring in? I go. I go, well, Rob Skiba would be an excellent choice for this because he's done some great water tests, you know, over Chicago, the Chicago skyline. And, and um, then they, the National Geographic said, hey, let's do a meetup. 
And it's like, okay, you guys order as a meetup, and you know, Rob will be brought in. And let's we'll turn it. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger to when you and I and Patricia arrived simultaneously at the meetup in Arcadia that Friday. It was it was amazing. Uh, you know, uh, National Geographic had a full team there, and the CBS National. Over uh, one hundred flat earthers too. Was yeah, it over hundred. I was wondering what the final tally. Yeah, came to. over one hundred. Yeah, Pretty cool. Yeah, and there was even a small turf war that was happening between those those two networks because CBS had wanted to go out there. You know, they were late to the game and they wanted to film some stuff. And National Geographic didn't want them out there because they said, "Look, we're flying in Mark Sargent, so if you guys come out, you can't talk to him <laughs> like, at all." They really said that you can't yeah, they, talk to him. You can't yeah, you talk can't, to Mark. Yeah, it was this informal agreement between them. They uh, they didn't want them there at all. They didn't want CBS there at all. It was like a turf thing. It was like, no, it's this is our thing. You can't come. <laughs> it's like our party. And and uh, but they worked it out. In fact, we we got involved at some point where uh, the LA people was like, what do we do? The CBS and and uh, uh, National Geographic are arguing over flat Earth at this point. You know about who's going to cover it. I said, just let them. Just give them each other's contact info because they're both in New York. Let them fight it out. And in the end, it was really cool because um, uh, CBS ended up. Uh, interviewing Patricia for an hour down at the uh, the meetup. Like, like, yeah, it was yeah another meetup that Patricia and I went to, which we didn't even see each other pretty much the entire time. So because, wait, you went to another one besides the one in Arcadia? No, or, no, or no. That, meaning, no. meaning when, when we've yeah, well, we've gone to others in the past. We've yeah. done we've done other events, and in this case, but most of the time when we do events together, we tend to get drawn off into different circles. Well, yeah. when yeah, when we went to the one in Seattle, it's like we didn't hardly see each other the whole time. And that was inside a bar. Yeah. And even when we went to Hot Docs, after we left the theater where they showed the Flat Earth documentary, we went out into the, I don't know, hallway area foyer. to exit the yeah. theater, foyer, if you will. Yeah. Uh, we were surrounded by viewers of the documentary, non-Flat Earthers, who were super interested in Flat Earth all of a sudden. And yeah. Mark was like, in a little circle of people. And I was over on another end with an, another circle of people. It was seriously like we were slightly mobbed, but we were completely separated by people. Right. And what we're trying to say by that is that I, sometimes there's a, so much interest in flat earth at an event. You don't really ever hang out with people that, you know, which is, I guess the point of a meetup to mix yeah. and mingle. Well, I mean like you were there Rob with us and I hardly even saw you. Yeah. No, I was just exactly. Gonna say. Yeah, anytime, you know, because I've had you guys on my show a few times and I've been on your shows. And right. other than that, we, I, you know, sometimes we talk to each other offline or whatever, but at any kind of conference or meetup, yeah. there's just, just never any. And I always look forward to that because I like, I want to talk to other speakers and, you know, other content producers and stuff like that. Yeah. And rarely do I ever get a chance to do that because, yeah. like I said, we, everybody, we just get mob pulled, pulled away i want to uh, make a point of at the upcoming um edmonton canada uh flat earth convention excuse me conference and the one that's coming up in denver colorado i want to make a point of like speaking more with people well not mark of course Bordy, uh, you, can. Um, <laughs> you know sorry. rob and jerry everybody i want to speak with everyone that i feel an affinity for and closeness to but it never ends up like that but i'm going to make a point to do it right. this time. Yeah, are you guys going to the um, Northern Lights deal that they're planning out in Canada? You mean the the after thing? Yeah, after the conference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Why, should... why not? Right. I mean, it it probably will be the only time uh, we'll get a chance to actually talk amongst ourselves. And I've never seen that before. That's an amazing spectacle, from what I've it, heard. It really is. I, I actually I've seen it. I saw it up in Northern Maine. Uh, back in like 93, 94, it yeah. freaked me out. I mean, it really, <laughs> it really freaked me out because I didn't know what it was. You know, I mean, I, I figured it out after after observing it, but it just took me completely by surprise. I mean, it's right. like the s sky just ripped open and it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. But, yeah. But it's really and, beautiful. and it's perfect. Yeah, I think I saw it the same, well, more or less the same time up in Seattle. Up on, up on Whidbey Island, and I didn't know what I was seeing either. It caught me off guard because it's perfectly silent. And, yeah. you know, it's... it's yeah, yeah the there's whole, no sound. There's no sound. It's horizon to horizon, these waves of... At least the things I was seeing was just these ribbons just yeah. ripping ripping over the sky. It's like, holy smokes. Okay. That's really uh, spectacular. It, it, now, okay, I got to tell... It's kind of a funny story. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, okay, this is... I got to say it was 93 or 94... 
uh, Clinton had just signed or just facilitated some. It was the Oslo Accords, I believe it was, mm-hmm. and it was like a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. Yeah. So of course, all the eschatological theologians out there are saying, "This is it. The seven years, the rapture is going to happen any day now." Right? Like it was like this big thing about the rapture is going to happen. Right? Right. So I'm out with. Uh, I was on a government contract. And uh, it was one of these deals where we did some work in the morning and then we had to leave for uh, like four hours and come back and pack stuff up and get ready for the next day. It was that kind of thing. And we're, where we were, there were a lot of rivers. And we thought, wait, well, you know, we got a bunch of hours here to kill. Let's, uh, let's rent some uh, canoes and right. we'll go down the river. So we did. And we're all browsing the rivers while they're, they start forking off into like a million directions and we got lost. And it starts getting dark, dark, dark. And finally, you know, night sets in. There's caribou, there's bear. I mean, there's stuff everywhere, you know, and you can hear it. Right. And we're like, okay, the land is looking kind of hostile and the water is starting to pick up speed. And we start slamming into rocks and uh, we start hearing, you know, like, like it's going to come to a waterfall or something. Yeah. So we start skirting the side of the river, you know, staying close to the shore as, as close as we could. And then we finally saw our street lights. We're like, let's aim for that. Sure. So we get to the street light, and I, I was the low guy on the totem pole. So they're like, "All right, Skiba, you stay here and watch the stuff. We're gonna walk into town. We see if we can get a ride back." You know, I'm like, "Okay." So here I am, all by myself, at this little kind of a dock area right to the side of the road, but under this street light. And I'm thinking about what I just seen on the news. And of course, from my religious worldview, I'm going, "Okay, this is interesting." And then all of a sudden, the sky rips open. <laughs> You know, there's no sound effect, but that's what I heard, you know, like in my head, you know, (laughs) (laughs) the sky rips open and I'm going, holy cow, this is it. You know, I'm like starting to jump from my rapture shoes here, you know. Right. And um, and I, I was thoroughly convinced that that was what was happening. And all of a sudden I didn't hear the truck behind me because of the river, but the truck pulled in behind me and their headlights turned around the corner and hit the river, which had a, um, a mist on top of it. Uh-huh. So it literally looked like a layer of clouds. Oh, <laughs> like, wow. St- step out on the clouds, right? In the rapture. Right, right. So I, I'm there like, this is, because you know, it illuminated a path for me on the clouds, you know? I'm like, oh, no. it's not the way I envisioned it, but I was totally, I mean, totally in the moment. And I'm like trying to step out onto the cloud, you know? Oh, no. And I hear, Skiba, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know? But I'm thinking, yeah, I was kind of hoping for well done, my good and faithful servant or something along those lines, you know, then I, then I realized awesome. what was going on. But yeah, that wow. was my, my first and only experience with the Northern Lights. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Pretty yeah. Cool. Why, why wouldn't you? I mean, I've well, been looking, I've, yeah. every time I hear some weird booming sound in the sky, you know, a little twinge inside me, it's like, oh. Is yeah. this it? Yeah. That's what I always think. What was that? <laughs> It, it reminds me of that um, that great line from the Simpsons episode years ago, where Ned is uh, he you know there's an elephant running, th- running through the you know the neighborhood just trampling things right at night, and he wakes up out of a dead sleep. He goes he goes it's it's the four elephants the apocalypse right, and she goes that's horse and deer. He goes well getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, alrighty yeah. then, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. So anyway, back to the flat Earth. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I get I get this. <laughs> what a weird transition and all. That <laughs> worst but, segue ever. Yeah. <laughs> worst segue ever. Well, I heard elephants. So you know. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the elephant in the room, flat Earth. Mm-hmm. Right. There we go. <laughs> there we go. See, that's the tie-in. Right? You know, I'm yeah. working it. I'm working it. Yep. So yeah, I get the invite to come out there, and I was planning actually going out there anyway, uh, for seed and stuff that I'm working on with that and. Right I was going to be meeting with some riders and stuff, but I wasn't planning until like l- the end of this month or maybe even early next month. So, but when some of the f- people at the meetup said, "Hey, you know, we'll fly out here," I said, oh, "Okay, you know, man, I'd get two things at once here." So uh, I fly out there. You guys flew out on Friday, also, right? For the eighth. Uh, yes. Friday. I I've think already was, lost track of when. I, we yeah, 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 Friday yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We flew out on Friday. Yeah. Okay, so because we got there at the same time. Um, yeah, yeah. What happened was, yeah, we flew in, but it took us, we got there, I think earlier than you, but it took us three hours. Yeah. The traffic was unbelievable. Oh, oh it took, yeah, it took the only reason we were late we landed to something. The meetup wasn't even starting till five 30 and we still were late by almost a full hour. 
So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah. LA and course, traffic. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, you know, I could never, ever deal with that. Because yeah. every have to every, plan. You have to say, I need to get from point A to point B. In a normal world, it would take me 15 minutes. Mark off an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, 30, yeah, mi- 30 miles, said. three hours. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, probably, It's. I think it said I was like five miles away, but my GPS was saying it's like 45 minutes. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> right. I should just get out of the car and walk. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or yes. take an elephant. That would be or tell, but, yeah, or but, take an elephant. But how's that for Providence that we arrived in the parking lot at the same time? That at the is same weird. time. Yeah. And is immediately, you know, the cameras are like came out of everywhere. <laughs> now I, I never got interviewed, so um, I'd like to hear how it went with you guys. So, Patricia, I guess you got interviewed. Mark said for like an hour or something. Well, by CBS, and that was at the Arcadia meetup, they pulled me away from the group, and an hour is a crazy amount of time to interview someone, but, you know, because they'll probably only use like a five-second yeah, segment or something. Yeah. Hopefully not the part where I said anything, you know, that wasn't perfectly said. <laughs> that's, that's how the media is um, when it comes to... That's why to I record it. them recording me. You're smart. Yeah. You are smart. It's not like they're going to take my words and actually chop them up, but they might take a sound bite where you might sound the most dim-witted. No matter who you are, oh, that yeah. can happen. I mean, we've seen it happen with uh, political figures, and some of them have been dim-witted. But, um, <laughs> yeah. but we've seen it with everyone, that they can make anyone sound kind of ridiculous, even if they're not ridiculous. Right. So you have to really watch your words when you speak with the media. You have to... I, I, I don't know when I'm talking to the media and I'm not like I've done this forever or done it even that much, but I always keep in mind a couple of things. Number one, first off is flat earth and truth. And that's the number one thing I want to get across. I speak as if I am speaking to all of the varying flat earthers with all of their different backgrounds. They come from the different religions and the different maps that they favor. So I try to keep it generic. And I also want to speak to the common person who's never heard of flat earth before and keep it somewhat simple in the explanation. And I want to make it clear spoken so the media can't cut me up. So while my mind is trying to devise a way to do all that and have all of those three things mesh, it's hard not to lose track of what you're saying. And that's the part I'm worried that they'd catch me doing. Yeah. I did that in the ABC interview, uh, and I have a, a tendency to do that anyway because I feel like I need to give the backstory for whatever it is that I'm <laughs> talking about. Yes. You know? and and then I'll tell the backstory and forget what the heck was I telling that story for, <laughs> you know. And uh, there's a point in that interview I can point it out. I don't. I hopefully it didn't come across to anybody else, but I'm like, yep, that's where I lost it <laughs> completely. Lost my train of thought. I know what you mean. It, it, when in a normal conversation, you would say something like. Wait, what was I just saying? I lost my yeah. place. But you can't really do that in an interview because it's kind of like a big red light that you're shining on your problem, like, you know, going. <laughs> you don't <laughs> exactly. want to draw attention to it. Right. Completely clueless. So, Mark, did you get interviewed at the um, at the meetup? The 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 interview stuff that I did at me, it was a little different. So I didn't get to do a big, long sit down like Patricia did we i was i was being choreographed as i was walking in and so which is why they wired me up in the parking lot and then they said okay we want you to meet you because they you you know what they have to shoot things in in a certain order it's like okay we Uh want you to meet mariana the the correspondent for the first time she's gonna walk up to you shake your hand say blah 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 it's like okay fine and then what it was okay then kind of make your way through the crowd kind of head up that way go behind the tree and then we'll sit down next to the picnic table and we'll talk to you for i don't know 10 minutes and then we'll have you walk over to the model and open up the model, the Chris Pontius model. And the entire time, I mean, they're, they're pointing me, you know, and saying, okay, we, you know, we want you, we want you in certain places just for the photography part. Uh, Uh, the, the main interview didn't literally come until literally at when everybody else was gone, uh, at the end of the whole salt and sea experiment. So mm -hmm. after everybody had left, it's really just Nat Geo and me sitting at a picnic table where they had set up you know, all the cameras and it's just Mariana and I talking for 35 minutes where at that point she was asking some really philosophical questions, which, hmm. which, which surprised me, meaning she wasn't, you know, initially it was like, well, what'd you think of the test and what do you think was proven? And what do you think wasn't proven? And what do you believe? Blah, blah, blah. But this was more along the lines of they were really big stroke questions, kind of like, okay, where do you think this flatter thing is going and what happens when it gets out of your control? 
what happens when flat earth develops a life of its own and starts hurting science and and then you're like what what do you think is going to happen to science when flat earth become some sort of dominant force. You know, what's going to happen to medicine? What's going to happen to technology? What's going to happen to this civilization? I mean, these are heavy, heavy things he's throwing at me, and I'm tired. And and I, I dealt with it the best I could. And I said, look, you know, we, you know, in the pursuit of truth, you know, there are there is going to be a price to be paid. And, you know, I, I can't remember my exact words, but I, I was in, I she couldn't get me mad. She she was she was trying to needle me in certain ways. And, and at the end, I realized that it didn't matter. Uh, you know, they were, they're still going to spin this the way they want to spin it. And mm-hmm. I mean, it is National Geographic, for God's sakes. They mm-hmm. one of the most prestigious periodicals ever in our civilization. And I mean, it's been around what in the late 1800s or something like that. And they've so, been pushing NASA and the globe Earth as well for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what they're all about. Yeah, big L. And there was this point where she and I were talking where uh, she caught me a little bit off guard where she goes, uh, you know, I, I heard that you got a chance to, you know, talk with Terry Verts during Good Morning Britain. And I said, well, I don't know about talk because he wouldn't talk to me. She goes, well, Terry's a friend of mine. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, and then it's like, are you she did the whole um, Stanton Friedman thing where she said, are you calling him a liar? And luckily for me, I had to deal with Stanton first. So I came back and I said, look, I go, Terry Virts uh, retired from NASA, full bird colonel, you know, commander in the, in the Air Force, which is equivalent of a full bird colonel. I'm going, that's that's you. You don't make it to be a, a colonel without knowing how to follow orders. And he does exactly that. And you know, I'm not saying he's a horrible guy with a black hat that twirls his mustache. But he's, you know, he's still a military man like anybody else. And you follow orders or you get, you know, drawn up on treason. Mm-hmm. And so, she's like, you know, she went down that road. Oh, I, I, I'm I, offended. And I think anyone that works for NASA should be offended by all this and blah, blah, blah. And, but I know she was it was just theater for her. She was, you know, after that, she was perfectly nice. She wanted to get those points across, though, for the camera. She asked me a question, question too. Her question to me was, how will you feel when you find out that what you're pushing on people isn't true? Will you feel, mm. feel guilty for leading people astray? And I should have felt offended at that. She's over there feeling offended about, you know, the whole Terry Virts and NASA thing. But I mean, shouldn't I be offended? As if I am purposely leading people astray. And how will I feel when I am found out? Right. And that's, that's what a bit that's what insulting. That's the question that BuzzFeed threw at me at the conference, the almost the almost verbatim. And here they are now. They're like the number one, you know, that guy with the mustache. <laughs> That's the number one video that always comes up when you type in flat earth into into YouTube. They they ran with it. And one of their producers decided, oh, I'm going to do sort of a parody video. And yeah. So, but what yeah, an he interesting has the, question, though, that that she asked you, what's going to happen when? Yeah. Yeah. And, if and she, yeah, she was like, talk, yeah, she was talking about it like it was inevitable. Yeah, you know, like this, like it's it's like really, and I, I I I was taken off guard a little bit. I was like, wait, you know, I wanted to come back and say, you're talking about this now, like it's not just something you can brush off. And I think she knew that, and the producer knew that because when he went to the meetup, he was stunned by the amount of energy that was there. All the people there were really charged up, and it yeah. wasn't just you know ten people milling around, you know, kind of you know <laughs> sad sacks. And that, and he was really stunned when thirty flat earthers showed up at five a.m. on a Sunday in the middle of the desert. To, and, and all of us had to drive probably at least an hour to get oh, there. Oh, at least, yeah, we were and, and get closest. lost and get lost. <laughs> no one yeah. knew where that was. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, we didn't know we didn't know the exact coordinates until we got up that morning. And we were like on the way, and we were talking to. We should have just followed the freaking camera team is what we should have done. <laughs> Because uh, we left before that. It's like, oh, we're going to get there before you. So that was not the case. So were they, they stayed in the same hotel? That you guys oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, not just in, stayed in the same hotel. They, they put me up in their hotel. Oh, they, okay. they booked like eight rooms. They had a, they had a big team. They had a, a, an eight-man team for the Sultan thing by the time they got there. They hired um, uh, camera mercs out of L.A. for part of it. And the rest of the guys were National Geographic regulars that they brought in from all over the place. And they now, who even was the rented guy? a room for the camera equipment. Yeah. Just Sorry. for wow. the camera equipment, yeah. yeah. So, who was the guy uh, that had a, a little GoPro uh, with a microphone on oh, it? Oh, that was the he, guy with the the was, guy with the little fuzzy mic that, that yeah. held the camera six inches from your face. From your face, IIG, yeah. I think that was IIG. He was IIG. That's yeah. what I thought. 
Yeah. yeah. They interviewed me and a guy named Stephen Chess has it on his channel. He filmed them interviewing me just to, I don't know, be a backup, kind of like you do, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I don't know what will ever happen with that. I checked um, IIG today on, you know, Googled them and to see if they'd come out with anything on the whole experiment. And uh, I didn't see them have anything yet. Yeah. And IIG stands for what? Independent Investigators Group, I believe. Investigators Group. And which is founded by Jim Underdown. Was he there? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you saw that guy. He was the guy with the never took off his sunglasses. Uh, blue shirt. Oh, the, he was cap. the main guy that was a spokesperson? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. He was like, we proved it. This is blah, 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 blah. Yep, like, yep. yep. That was yeah. him, absolutely. You aren't scientists. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, nobody left him alone. I felt for him. By the time he, the end of the day, he did not want to talk to anybody. He oh, was man. just, they, the, the Flyers community was just beating on him. On a, every time he was alone. <laughs> They just came. He he was never alone. Basically, he, people he just brought walked. it on himself, though. He because did. <laughs> Absolutely. He was Captain Attitude from the second I saw oh, him. Oh, yeah, he was. He was perfectly awful. So, because yeah, he was sitting at the picnic table bench, uh, r right by the seashore there, mm -hmm. uh, and I was talking to I forget her name now. The 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 girl that was a flat earther who brought the, her her P nine hundred. Oh, oh si uh, Sydney. Sasha or Sa Sasha or Sydney. Sasha or Sydney, yeah, uh, one of them. Yeah. Uh, and so we were just talking, but he was like, it's "Real out, oh, we're going to break." Oh, we're going Captain to break. Attitude, but we'll come back after the break. And talk to okay. We're back on the Revolutionary Radio Project. I am your host, Rob Skiba, and this evening I'm talking with Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer about our recent trip to California and the Salton Sea. The Independent Investigation Group, that's correct, right? Right, right. They, uh, right. they decided they were going to do a test to try to debunk Flat Earth, Right. and they chose probably the worst possible <laughs> place you could ever imagine. In, in the entire so. country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, a dead sea below sea level uh, to the east of Los Angeles called the Salton Sea, which was abandoned decades ago. Uh, it initially started out as going to it was supposed to be the new Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And it, between the, the windstorms and the, the geothermic activity and all the other toxins in the thing that basically became a dead sea. Uh, super, super salty, and there's yeah, there's a few fish that still live there, and some pelicans that fly around. But it's it smells, <laughs> it's really, really hot, uh, and it's awful. It's one of the most unpleasant places next to the water I've ever been at. Yeah, it looks pretty when you see video of it. It looks kind of pretty, but right. when you're smelling it and the heat is beating down on you, and it's only seven a.m. and you feel like you're going <laughs> to pass out from sunstroke, and right. someone tells you, "Hey, that's not seashells you're walking on. Those are years and years of fish bones." Right. You say to yourself, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, it was really, really awful. And to their credit, I I think they actually did think about doing the test early, but you know, when you get up that early in the morning, nobody's ready to do anything. And by the time we got there, uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember when you got there, but you know, the raft hadn't even been inflated yet. And yeah. the, the big thing was they couldn't find, because the, the first test, which was the, the more important of the two, was they were going to 
filmed some balloons on the other side of the lake, which was about nine miles to, you know, to the to the west. And they couldn't find the target. It didn't even occur to me. You know, there's your rookie mistake, which is you, you, it's like, OK, we, we, you know, nine miles away, landmarks become all fuzzy. And so you don't know exactly where to point your camera. And because you, you you just have no idea. It's like how do you how do you do that? And so they couldn't find it. And finally, we stepped in because we had people on both sides, and we pointed. You know, we had some guys with the P nine hundred. Wendell was the guy that that really should take the credit for it. And he spotted them on the beach. Uh, it, this was grand. This was after the sun came up, so it was between what six six and six and six thirty. And he spotted the balloons, and they were still on the beach. And he radioed in to our guy over there, Nathan, and the you know you, we got that filmed on camera. It's like, oh yeah, here just and it was weird because the guy they were arguing. It's like, no, they can't see the balloons, and the guy on the other side says, well, it doesn't matter. Just have them point over here because if if because if they didn't do that, they would never even had the test, and it was miraculous. No, but he our guy on the other side with the P nine hundred wasn't recording though, was he? No. Oh man. That's, well, that's no, because, the part that's bad. That, that, well, but it's it no is, one's fault. No, because remember, we weren't we were only supposed to be there as observers. We were no, never yeah, supposed <clears throat> to be part of this test. Sly Sparkane, another one of the verbal uh, yeah, yeah. flat earth guys. He did a whole rant on that and he he was calling you and I out and saying you know, okay, these you know, big wig flat earthers are out there, and they didn't even bring their camera. I know Skiba's got a P900. Why didn't he bring it? Blah, blah, blah. And he's just ranting on. For, and he kept going on and on about it, like why I didn't bring my camera. Well, and, you know, I'm listening to the video going, you freaking moron. First of all, our community has done this test dozens of times. Yeah. Yeah. We know what it looks like oh. in different atmospheric conditions. We know what works, what doesn't work. And, yeah. It, well, first, we have no need to do it again. We've no. documented it. We even do stuff with lasers with the Guinness World Records right. there, for crying out loud. So, like, why would I bring my camera there? Exactly. I've done it. Uh, exactly. As I told Nat Geo before we, you know, days before we did this, I said, look, here's what's going to happen. They're going to go out there. The heat is going to rise. They are going to claim that the wall of distortion, how, whatever you want to call it, atmospheric lensing, Fata Morgana, the mirror effect, whatever you want to call it, they're going to claim that's the curvature. And we're going to say, no, it's one of those things we just mentioned. That's it. And and neither of the two sides will, will ever agree, which is why, and I, I just beat it into them, I said, which is why we don't do this test in in the daylight anymore we don't do it during the heat and we definitely don't do it on one of the hottest lakes you could ever find in the country during the summer <laughs> it was practically a clinic on what not to do when it came to this test and we shoot i said we shoot at night we shoot with lights we shoot with lasers we do it in cold weather and, and in fact i forwarded that wonderful test if anyone wants to look it up all you have to do is type in uh, flat earth frozen 7.53 which was just a husband and wife team across a seven point seven and a half mile stretch almost identical to the salton sea and all she did was because it was the lake was just starting to freeze she put the flashlight on the ice you know basically right there right on the water level and he put his camera at about two to three foot height and he saw it. It was, it was perfect. And they that's all that you needed to do. And yet they just ignored us and kept doing the well, stu- stupid crap. We also told him about the Lake Balaton uh, test that was done with a military-grade laser mm-hmm. in Hungary and how it was uh, witnessed by the Guinness Book of World Records. Not trying to prove, prove flat Earth, but it was the longest laser test over do- oh, ever done right. over a body of water or, or something along those lines. And right. it definitely shows that there was no curve. But he said... We don't believe your tests. Jim Underdown is the one who was saying, we don't believe your tests. We wanted to be able to see it right here and right now. You could come back here to the Salton Sea any time of the year, day or night, and it will always show this result. That's because we live on a globe. (laughs) It's going to blow a blood vessel, but... But wait, yeah. so we live on a globe at the Salton Sea in California, but in Hungary, Lake Balaton, we don't. So what kind of thing are we living on where it's a globe and it's flat? We Plus, don't. from a scientific standpoint, he didn't have a leg to stand on because he was saying, oh, what Patricia just said, where it's like, oh, you can come back day or night, any time of the year, it's always going to be the same. It's like, really? How would you know? This is literally the first time you've done this test. Right. And it was it was killing me because the man, because I, I did enough homework. I, you know, I, I try to look at any opponent. And when I was looking at him, and he's got a pretty big wiki entry, considering he has no social media presence at all. 
And I said, okay. He, he specializes in debunking ghost hunters and debunking mediums and um, fortune tellers uh, and you know stuff like that. And that that's his wheelhouse. This was so outside of that. I'm amazed he got anything done. So, uh, you know, kudos to him for for now getting a little feather in his cap because he got a National Geographic. But it's it's going to be short lived. But I mean, the whole thing was completely rigged. I mean, like you said, and I said the same thing too. the guy with the, you know, and that footage is going to probably look pretty strange. I mean, he had that GoPro and he put it like, like you said, like two feet in front of your face. You know, you're like, dude, like personal space, man, back up. Yeah. Um, which I'm wondering if that's going to make, just make us, they're going to put goofy music behind it. And it's going to make it, all of us look like we're, you know, right. when you look through the peephole in the door, you know, how everybody's right, right. nose looks big and they look weird. Um, but yeah, he interviewed me and, uh, and I said basically the same thing you do. I'm like, you guys are going to get exactly the results you're looking for because of the temperature, because, you know, all the atmosphere conditions are going to, are very favorable for that. I mean, it's like they chose that spot specifically because they knew it would do that. You know, I mean, there are plenty of other places in California or anywhere else, for that matter, that they could have done the test besides yeah. 300 feet below sea level or 200 or whatever it was. And yeah, and like you said, it, uh, gosh, it was in the 90s. I was thinking it was like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I asked somebody what time it was and it was like, oh, it's 930. I'm oh, like, you kidding I- me? Yeah, it was it was it was brutal. And and you guys, anyone that's listening, you don't understand the conditions. The day before it was 105 degrees out there and it was was awful. It was just just brutal. And so when we the the Flyers community, yeah, they were there in force by 5 a.m. By 10, 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. People were thinking, oh, we got to get out of here. Because it's getting because the heat was just wearing everybody down, and the people were starting to get punchy. To yeah. where you know I was, I was going to pass out. I had to go sit in the car that <laughs> Mark rented and run the uh, air conditioning occasionally, and then go back out and then come back in. Yeah. Then I realized I'm going to run us out of gas, and we kind of <laughs> were in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, it was it was a yeah, but what, what you said, Rob, was was absolutely true. They picked for maybe they got lucky a little bit because. Had they shot the footage at 5.30, because when, when I got there and I, other people got there, it was the sun hadn't come up yet. And yeah. so you could you could see the lights from the buildings that were on the water. I mean, it was that clear. You know, there wasn't any haze that it was the, the water was very, very calm. The wind hadn't picked up. There wasn't any thermals thing happening. And if they would have shot it just then, yeah, they would have had it, which is why even when the sun came up an hour, you know, not long after uh, and we'd shot that uh uh, what Wendell had started looking through his P900, he could still see the balloons. But then they waited another, what, another hour after that, 45 minutes to an hour, and then they showed National Geographic exactly what they wanted to see. Now, like, so I saw the video that you posted that had our guy over there, and, and they were trying, you could, they were FaceTiming, I guess, the other side and yeah. trying to w- walk him in. Yep. Now, I couldn't quite make out what the other guy was saying. The, the other guy was from uh, IIG. IIG, the short guy that was standing yeah. next to the balloons, yeah. Now, did he say, have you got us and, and confirmed that they had picked him up on the other side? It, it was... Uh, yes, I think so. I, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was something along the lines of, uh, you can see us? Well, you can't see us because... There's a curve. Yeah, yeah. So what what the the critical <laughs> moment was when our guy was shooting across and he saw the balloons, right? But he wasn't standing next to the IIG guys. And so he um but so that but he was the IIG guys, they were talking to each other as well. And all of a sudden they realized it's like, oh yeah, flat earth the the flat earth guys have have, have got us over here. And then one of the IIG guys, well, no, they can't have you. They can't have you. You know, it was that, you know, suspension of disbelief. It's like, wait, you, they can't have you because you, they're on the other side of the curve. And the guy goes, it doesn't matter. Just freaking point over here or the test is never, ever going to happen. <laughs> the guy on the other side realized where what what the bigger ramifications were. It's like, look, if you don't take Flatter's help right now, this test doesn't happen. And it, he, he basically said, it doesn't matter what, you know, what you think, what your beliefs are at this point. Let's work together to at least get this, some sort of semblance of a test done. And uh, yeah, but, uh, man, I wish the guy was rolling the camera. It's the, the should have, would have, even wish even if he did, we, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have helped much. Is what which is why we're going back. Uh, I don't know if you've been back. Told, 
Yes. Yes. This is a new development. What? Well, it's not not just, you know, we as in Mark and I, there is a group of people who are listening right now, a whole bunch. (laughs) And I know I'm going to leave a name out because I'm just doing this off the cuff. But a bunch of people who were there are going back and it's in about a week from right now. Uh And uh, (laughs) I just want to say hello to those who are. No, no, no. Oh, Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, there is in a week. Wait, what are we doing though next month? um, I don't know. Next month. But. um, Let's see. Um, Nathan Gonzalez and uh, Wendell Walton. You mentioned Wendell, and um, we've got uh, Sasha, Sasha, Joss Uber, Aaron Kreshock, Stephen Flat Earth Weather, Sydney Earther, uh, Caroline. Many other people who were there before are going to be there again this time. And yeah, I believe it is about a week or so away. I wow! Thought was, I thought there was oh crap! Seriously, so I thought they're gonna do it. Of they're going to do it early in the this. morning, like real early. Or at, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to do oh, it yes. really, really, really early. Um, and I'm trying to figure out now I'm going to have to message some people because I didn't realize it was going to be. It can't be a week from today, can it? <laughs> it's uh, the 27th through the 30th. I mean, that's when you fly in. And then when we fly out and one of those days is when they're going to do it. Yeah, that's next week. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. I, I thought it was next month, too. And then I'm like, wait, what? It's in days from now? <laughs> I anyway, but, well, anyway, the point is, is that we're going the, 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 IIG. And they've t- invited IIG back. <laughs> IIG ticked off people so badly that the, the flyer community is down there. It's like, oh, no, no. Retribution. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to show you how to do this test. And they're gonna they're gonna set it up exactly how it should have been set up, and yeah, they're gonna they're gonna shoot it the way it was meant to be. That's funny. You know, it was funny too when when I got I got there shortly after you guys because I had gone to that one place that the, the GPS or whatever the the address I guess that you sent me, and uh, you're like, no, you got to turn around and come around the other side. Okay, so what? Twenty minutes later, I got there probably twenty minutes, half hour. Sun hadn't come up yet. So I start walking down to the shore and I see kind of the setup everybody had. And you got the IIG guys that had cameras about three to four feet high on tripods. And that woman, I can't think of her name, that was the flat earther, she had hers at like six inches above the water. And I just started laughing. I'm like, there's the confidence of a flat earther. She's got her P900 like six inches off the water. They got theirs four feet off the water. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was it was ridiculous how they how they had it set up. It was it was it was destined to fail. And again, the the heat that was being generated this so fast that I was pointing out every time because remember the, the National Geographic yeah, the, cameras, they they were talking to us every once in a while. It's like, what do you think about this? What do you think of this? I'm going, look. I kept pointing at the shoreline across, you know, nine miles across. I'm going, look. There's entire sections of shoreline that isn't there anymore that was there 30 minutes ago, <laughs> and yeah. it just kept getting worse and worse. I go, I go, see that thing that looks like an island down there? That's a mountain, and there used to be a smaller mountain next to it. It's gone. It's disappearing as we speak, and in another 30 minutes, it's going to be gone, and, and it was. By the time we left, you couldn't see anything. The distortion was so bad. In fact, if you would have taken a time lapse, it would have looked exactly like that um, – that skunk, skunk bay bait. footage. Yeah, you know, that's what I was gonna say. That would be good if they, if you guys think about it when you go out there, is have somebody just set a camera up to do that. You know, set one up for like a two-hour run, and uh, just stare out in that direction. Because I know what you're talking about. When we're looking out toward the the test site, if you look to the left, way down there, the mountain range, and how that just completely started to disappear. It would be interesting to show that whole thing in a time lapse. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would have been awesome to to show that in a time lapse because it would have been uh, glaring. And had I had a little more forethought, I would have I would have told Nat Gia, I go, look, if you have an extra camera pointed on the freaking yeah, point on the mountain over there. Yeah, yeah. Put just and just let it roll because the distortion, which is why I included that skunk bay footage, because the skunk bay footage had all those great stats at the bottom of it, you know, showing yeah. temperature. And, and yeah. it was like a, every second was two minutes. And it was that was perfect because it's well, they're the, doing that. They're doing it. Nathan Gonzalez just messaged me who is in, involved with all of this heavily and said they're doing that, that the, the, getting the shoreline and what's happening with that too, not just the experiment itself. Yeah, right. good for them. Yeah. The, uh, I saw people uh, making fun of us talking about, well, Sky was it Sly Sparkane, whatever the guy's name is, was making fun of me for talking about the skunk bay. And he's like, Skiba doesn't even know where that is. Like, I care. Like, why do I need to know where it is? 
I'm just talking about what's happening in the video. Right. And I was talking to one of the IIG guys about that at a picnic table bench, you know, while we're waiting for the, the second test to go out. And um, he was saying, well, Bay should give you a clue. Like he's being really sarcastic with me. And he's like, you know, Bay should have given you a clue. Uh, that's the, it would have been the tides. And I'm like, uh, how many tides do we have a day? Because if you watch that, it's happening quite a number of times. Oh, uh-huh. The other side disappears, comes back, disappears, comes back. And I said, so you're telling me you believe then that that whole little village on the other side was being flooded right. several times. Right. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and yeah, I've seen tides and tides don't look like that. Trust me. I grew up on a beach and is that that was all heat. And of course you you could you could um Well, the mountain bl- in the background is, is is stretching and doing all kinds of stuff. Oh too. yeah. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous and I kept trying to drill it into him. I I over and over and going, "Look, you don't do this test. We don't do this test anymore during the middle of the day because of this reason. You can't do it." I mean, you were the closest one to it when you took that boat across Chicago, but that was a little bit different yeah. when you were when you were doing the whole boat trip. That this- was a miracle day, man. I have to tell you. That day yeah. Because even the boat captain, and he'd been on the boat like his whole life. He, his, you know, his family, everything. You know, that's this guy's livelihood, right? He's like, he even said it in the video that I shot. He's like, this never happens, <laughs> you know, like where you can pull out from the dock, look and see it the entire time, because it's usually atmospheric distortions making it disappear and whatnot. Right. He's like, wow, man, this, like everybody was freaking out that we would show the footage to while we were there. Like wow, that's you got an amazing day. Yeah. But my my contention was that 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 is the default. That the default is to be able to see it, but due to atmospheric lensing and you know, refraction and different atmospheric mm-hmm. conditions, it distorts and prevents you from seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But they have it the other way around. They say no during certain atmospheric conditions, it magically throws the whole city up over the curve. Right. Right. It yeah. It's just it's again, which is why the the Flyers community eventually abandoned the whole thing because or that whole part of it because the results were too inconsistent. It's like no, you shoot at night, you shoot in cold weather at the very least. You know, if you want to use normal lights, and if you can get a hold of military grade lasers, which we could, that's that's what eventually you end up using. I mean, we we went through all these hurdles time and time again. I I. I for three years now. Yeah, for three years. I go look. We've been doing this test pretty much nonstop for three years. It was we, uh, it was funny when Jim Underdown was be you know he was challenging flat earthers and saying look 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 here you guys are all wrong when he got the results that he wanted. Um, he from the IIG group and then we were talking about military grade lasers and then he said you can't get those and someone said right. we've got one we've got them <laughs> yeah yeah because he said they were legal anything that could make reach over 10 miles was military and and you'd have to get it from the military and going yeah we got a military grade laser he and also then- said a p900 was digital and therefore wouldn't be providing the right imagery yeah, he's. And it grass. wasn't Jim Underdown. I think it might have been somebody else with the IIG group. He's now, one of the guys was really cool, though. Um, at least to me, he was the shorter guy. It was he spent most of the time looking through. The, they had a P nine hundred. Also, oh, that was Ross, probably Ross, the, the really short Ross. guy. Yeah, yeah, he was actually really cool. I had a, some good conversations with him. He's yeah. not really an IIG guy. He's no, more of he, a, he's a one. Of, he's a podcast guy that came. Yeah. To yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yep. And he you was, know, the IIG guys were probably all nice people, but you know how it is with Flat Earth or with anything that's different than what the standard uh, belief system is. People get angry and they become yeah. dark versions of themselves. They have <laughs> to be right. And they yeah. all of the education that they had uh, couldn't be for naught. Things can't be different than I thought they were. Ugh, you know, the anger just wells up. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It, you know, that's a good point. I mean, in uh, any other context, these people are probably really cool. Right. But you're right. This topic, unlike anything that I have ever encountered, and I've talked about a lot of controversial things before, brings out demons in people. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It just brings out the worst in people. Talking about God does it as well? Or you're Not as bad as this. Belief? <laughs> Talking about being a vegan something. does it really bad too. People freak out. Um, it, it's 
but this is this is way worse than those other things. Way right, yeah. worse. Well, because remember, it it is something that you can't walk away from. With all other conspiracies, you can say, well, it's not my problem, or it's buried in the desert, or we don't, you know, I just don't have to think about it, and it'll go away. But with this, it's like, no, 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 no. This is what you've been walking on your entire life. You know, this is the ultimate street magic trick. And that really rattles people. I mean, you know, Rob, you've, you've seen it many times. I mean, it, it shakes them, and they don't know what to do. I mean, they get they really go into that five stages of acceptance thing where you know first is denial followed almost immediately by anger and some people hold on to it more than others but uh, it's a, it, when you're in the scientific community which we were we were in the midst middle of a skeptics group who doesn't believe in anything and uh, the national geographic who only believes in science uh, you know it's not like they're ever going to publish a thing saying god exists you know that it's never going to be one of their headlines so between the two of them, we, you know, there was a, there was a pretty heavy resistance pocket there that we had to deal with. IIG in general, like you were saying earlier, Mark, they do things like debunk ghosts or yeah. telekinesis or whatever. Right. Now, the way they did this test, they were ill-prepared. They had, I hate to say it, but rinky-dink equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And they didn't start when they said, which was dawn, they started after 7 p.m., excuse me, 7 a.m., well, the way they perform this test makes me think a lot of their tests on those supernatural things need to be revisited because <laughs> those might have been done wrong, too. Yeah, that's a good point. So it seems to me that we are reaching some sort of critical mass right now. Um, the number of videos that I've been seeing probably in the last, I don't know, two months or so from various science or science-ish media outlets putting out, this is why we know it's a globe. You know, like, okay, time to put this flat earth thing to bed. Like, if we're not making some kind of huge headway here, why are they all of a sudden putting out all these videos? Or a video that I saw recently, uh, Rob, where somebody claimed that you are uh, actually Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so one came out to, uh, yeah, just recently. Uh, well, yeah. before that, I was Jim Staley. So I apparently oh, yes. I'm a, I'm a shape-shifting lizard or something. Yeah, they do face overlays. I don't know what the technology is. And boy, there you are. They morph his face into yours and yours into his. I mean, they could probably do that with my face and my cat's face. I mean, it's just so, it's non-scientific, that's for sure. Yeah. It's getting pretty crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And there's, as you know, and, and we can't necessarily talk about it, but... There's a lot more people involved in Flat Earth at just about every level you can think of out there. And I, I've said before and I've said it again, 90% of the Flat Earth community is in the closet. And the only reason they haven't come out yet is because they're just waited. You know, they're just waiting for that moment that that they can walk out into it and be, you know, no fear of repercussion. Right. They won't lose their job, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not yet safe totally. It, no. It's sort of approaching fashionable maybe that's a good word i don't yeah. know trendy maybe trendy yeah. we're we're approaching that i think that's where we're getting, getting close to right uh right. and you know when it crosses over that to being accepted um then i think we'll see some of the more professional people coming out but you nailed it mark you're like i you tell people all the time i guarantee you you know somebody yeah you know somebody that's a flyer there we'll yeah. talk about that when we come back Frequency Radio is your number one. This is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones obviously under heavy, heavy, heavy Masonic <laughs> influence. <laughs>
And we're back on the Revolutionary Radio Project. I'm your host, Rob Skiba. For the second hour of the broadcast, I'm talking with my guests, Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer. We're talking, just sort of having a um, candid conversation, I guess, about our recent trip to California and the uh, Salton Sea. And right before the break, we were talking about, is this reaching some sort of critical mass, this whole flat earth thing? And um, Mark is fond of saying, I guarantee you, <laughs> you know somebody yeah. <laughs> they may not admit it, but you know somebody. And after you know, we finally called it a day and left the Salton Sea, uh, somebody suggested this uh, kind of a health food cafe place. Right. And uh, what was it? Palm Springs, I think, right? Yeah, Palm Springs. So, so we get there, and I got there first. And um, Nathan, I think, got shortly after me, and a few other people started coming in. And as I was waiting for my order, the lady behind the counter, she's look, I had my um, – Chicago Skyline t-shirt on it is not a mirage and she says um what's your t-shirt mean so I didn't mention flat earth or anything I just described the test and you know the Joshua Nowicki picture and all that kind of stuff and then later she's like are you guys flat earthers <laughs> we're like yeah and then she starts looking around and it's like this light bulb went off when she realized who was in her store <laughs> like right. she's like oh my god my dad's gonna get I gotta get a picture of everybody <laughs> I'm like, right like the lady yeah, at yeah, the counter she, was. <laughs> yeah, she was throwing hand signs the whole nine yards, <laughs> and it was really cool. And again, that's just some random, totally ve- random. vegan grocery store slash cafe in the middle of Palm Springs. It yeah. could be anywhere. And that goes along with the other stories I ran into. The security guy that was in Atlanta, the um, uh, the the bartender when I was doing the watching Zen Garcia debate. Um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Dr. Pigeon. Dr. Pigeon. Uh, they're they're everywhere. Uh, in fact, my um, I, I won't say who they were exactly, but I, I'll tell you this story real quick because I can I think I can mask it. Not not what we did, but the other thing. My cousin calls me up from a um, from New York, from Manhattan, and she went to a wine bar with some high level banking execs, extremely high level banking execs, and she was just talking to him, blah blah blah. You know, they're just talking about crap in general, and they start going on about conspiracies. And one of them starts going into flat earth and she's, oh, I can chime in. She's, and she's not a conspiracy person. And she says, oh yeah, my, my cousin, he organizes flat earth conferences, right? And I'm going, okay, well that's wrong, but that's okay. And they're going, whatever, you're just trying to get on the conversation. She goes, no, I'm telling you, my cousin, Mark Sargent, he's into this flat earth stuff. And they just froze and they look at her, not kidding you. And, and they go, wait, you know, Mark Sargent. <laughs> It's like what? And cousin. they go, and she thought she thought they were messing with her, and she's going, "Oh, shut up! You don't know." And she, I just said his name. She's like, "No, the flat Earth clues. We know everything about it. We've been following this stuff for at least a year." And these, I mean, these guys were had no. These these are you know Wall Street power players, and you know they were into it. And it's like, holy smokes! And to where I, I I will not share it with anybody. But they, uh, she sent me a picture of these two guys holding up the freaking flat Earth map on the phone. It's like what? <laughs> and I've kidding. seen it. He sent it to me too. So yeah, I know yeah. this is true. It, it's it, it is funny, and and uh, not we're not going to mention any names. No, of course. right, right. So yeah. uh, we might as well I mean, say it. We might as well. Yeah, tell and it. I'm glad that both of you guys and my. I'm glad we all were there together because if it was just one of us, no one telling the story, it. right? But. It was totally bizarre. We're sitting at the 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 guy that um, uh, kind of hosted us for the uh, meetup, right. took us out to dinner. Uh, Joshua right. Vale. Yeah. And so we're all sitting out to eat and having a good time. And and uh, Patricia, I think you got the text, right? Yep. Yes, there was a gentleman that's my Facebook friend, and he also you know met me in person at the Arcadia meetup. And I posted on Facebook that we all were out eating. To dinner, uh, eating dinner at I think it was Rancho Mirage, the area we were in. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I, you know, I, you know, what you know on Facebook, you can put your location of where you are. So he, I got a Facebook message while we were waiting for our food, and the message said, "Hey, Patricia, you're in the neighborhood of a special friend of mine, someone my, my sister knows well. It's my sister's husband, and his name is." Blah, Beep. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Beep. yeah, insert and, celebrity name here. Yeah. And he'd like to invite you and Rob Skiba and Mark to come up. And I checked with those guys, you guys, and you guys said, sure. And so after dinner, we drove up and got through the security and went in and had an amazing time. That was so with bizarre. With him and his wife and his children were there. Beautiful home. They were very normal. 
but also very aware of all sorts of conspiracies, <laughs> yeah. including flat earth. It was yeah. so bizarre because, you know, we're having a good time just eating and talking and stuff. And, and Mark leans over and he says, got a minute? <laughs> can, 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 can I talk to you in private for a second? I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. So he takes me off to the side and says, yeah, so what do you think? He shows me the picture, you know. And first, you know, I recognized him, but I didn't recognize him. I was like, wait, wait. Right. And um, you like, want to go? I'm like, well, that'd be interesting. So, yeah. And I actually thought that they were at a bar or something. I no. didn't realize yeah. we're going to end up at this person's house right. for three hours. Yeah. And that was so, like, surreal. Right. It was so bizarre. But the, the point of this, this story right. is that at, at some very high levels within the entertainment industry, let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, lots of people are talking about this and some are even, you know, perhaps converting or at least considering it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I, we, we even heard, I know you were going to say this, Mark. I stole all right, it from you. All right. That's that there was a, a famous celebrity woman. I won't even name any names that we didn't right. meet, but right. she happened to be at a big celebrity event and they were discussing conspiracies. And then she said to the man whose house we went to, um, you think that's a very weird conspiracy. My father's into flat earth. <laughs> right. And so that means within that's... Hollywood, quote unquote, elite, uh, not that we're into Hollywood elite or any of that, but within that's that a soundbite world... it's going to go out tomorrow, by the no, way. Well, <laughs> Thanks within, a lot. Within that world that we don't at all Affiliate partake rate. in or we're not affiliated with, right. people are in private parties discussing flat earth and they're not laughing at it. They're yeah. interested in it. Yeah. That's what struck me is that this person, aside from just being very, fr very friendly, right. uh, was very open in having a, you know, a genuine conversation with us about it, you know, yeah. like, yeah. And which was really God. refreshing. And yeah, discuss that, God. <laughs> that was oh. kind of mind blowing too. In a positive way. Not, we always hear all the Hollywood celebrities are Satanists. Not this guy. Nope. No. No, and it was, a, and it wasn't like it was a, it was an intimate audience. I mean, it was them and their extended family from her side, uh, but it was, uh, it was amazing. And and we could have probably, if it was, if she had her way, would have been there freaking all night. Uh, and and that was, was a thing too, because you could tell they were tired, and yeah. we're like, look, look, you know, we don't want to, you know, keep you if you need. To. And and he was kind of like, no, no, you know, like he wanted to. Yeah. Continue the conversation. Yeah. But. but he had to go to L, had to go L in the next day. And we, heck, we had to freaking get yeah, up at, we, at the yeah. crack of existence. To, and we'd already uh, been up, well, the day before I'd been up. I remember when we drove there, uh, Rob, you said, well, I'll probably just stay for a half hour. Or that's something. what I thought. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that's why, well, actually, because I thought we were going to a bar. So I'm going, oh, right. Yeah, that's kind of last and thing. And also, I we didn't really know. I mean, you know, we're people who are interested in quote unquote conspiracy theories. So, right. what, are we uh, driving somewhere where some guys are going <laughs> to talk about the and kill us? <laughs> right. Uh, never let them take you to a second location. No, yeah. it's yeah, not the but, but what I, I understood finally, it finally hit me was that the reason why flat earth is going to keep going the way it's going and just get bigger and bigger and bigger is because there is no grapevine because what we were talking about here is a celebrity grapevine. It's like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I heard it from this woman who was at an Oscar party and he, she heard it from her father and blah, blah, blah. And and the same thing with the finance guys that I mentioned earlier. Who knows where they heard it from, you know? But it's like eventually it made it up to these guys, and they were they were pretty high on the pecking order. And that is flat Earth. It does not matter what you know your level of talent, your level of beauty, your level of wealth, yeah, your level of anything. That flat Earth is more is bigger than you. It's bigger than your organization. It's bigger than your country. And that's why it, there, it, there is no grapevine that's immune to it. It's, it's like there's nothing. I mean, it's, you, with any other conspiracy, it's like you could just shake it off. But with this, it, it, you know how it goes when when you're having small talk with somebody, you talk about the weather, you talk about sports teams and crap like that, and then it's like, yeah, you know what I heard? I heard an interesting story, Bob, and and people try to out interest each other. You know, it's like, oh yeah, that's nothing. I knew about a guy who you know jumped out of an airplane while it was moving, and then eventually, like what happened with the uh, this Hollywood group. This woman came in and threw down. It was like, it's like, oh, no, I can trump you all. <laughs> and and she did. And that's what I think it's turned into. I think Flat Earth has now become the most interesting story currently going out there in, in any casual or non-casual conversation. So I'm at the airport 
get ready to fly back home in yeah. LA. And I went ahead and paid for the um, sky priority because I didn't want to have to wait. So I'm in the priority line at uh-huh. Delta. Yeah. And the, there's a, the, the group two is starting to fill in right next to me. They have, they have like these pillars you line up behind. Yep. yep I know. Them. <clears throat> and so this guy that's in group two, he's diagonally in front of me. He's talking with this other guy and he kept looking over at me. And uh, finally he goes, excuse me, what's your name? I said, Rob Skiba. He goes, the Rob Skiba? I'm like, yeah. He tells his friend, he's like, okay, all right. So he's like, he's not a flat earther. And he's like, that's the guy you need to listen to right there. You need, and so like, this is, I'm ready to just board the plane. So then I get on the plane, I sit down and as he's passing me, he goes, would you do a presentation on the, pro- on the plane? I'm like, oh, wow. uh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do a presentation wow. on the plane. But it was the funniest thing because like he was tr- practically the whole rest of the flight. I could tell he was trying to convince his friend because he came up to me after we landed and talked to me some more. But that's kind of the way it is right now these days. Yeah, I, I, I have sort of a similar one where I was coming back from Raleigh. From uh, from from the national conference, and we had on that flight going back to Seattle, you know, because you know all the flat earthers pretty much left at once. I think there were five or six of us on that plane, and uh, most of them hadn't really talked to me at all during the conference. And so while I was sitting there on the aisle seat, there were the the the, the flat earth members were coming up to me and talking to me, and you know one by one, you know they were coming to the aisle and talking to me. And the woman, there was a empty middle seat, and then the woman that was sitting next to the window, she finally couldn't take it anymore. So as we're on our <laughs> approach to Seattle she's going look I hate to be intrude and I don't usually talk to people on airplanes you know how that conversation starts uh, <laughs> but I don't think we're going to survive this trip and I've never slept with a man before no she <laughs> she said that's from airplane uh, she goes uh, she goes why are these people who are you know, she goes who are you and I go oh uh, I was at a conference I was talking about and, and then I stopped I go you know what I don't really think I should tell you. I go, you don't want to know this. You know, it's goes, no, I really, really want to know. Are you sure? Because if I tell you, it's going to change. You know, that sound of the, the shaking, the spray paint. Yep. (laughs) Rattle, 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 rattle. Yeah. And, and I, I told her as we're landing, I'm telling her, okay, it's flat earth. And I give her like my five minute nickel tour. And, and then, and I go, I'll go here. I wrote my stuff down, you know, my, my information down. And I said, all right, this is where you go. You know, you're not going to sleep for a few weeks, but when you come out of it, you know, you're going to understand things a little better. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. But yeah, she was just being tortured the entire time because she's like, wait, what? Because <laughs> she's like looking at me. She didn't recognize me, of course. And, right. and the other people, I'm handing out T-shirts and, you know, <laughs> everyone's so happy to, you know, from the conference. It was it was fantastic. So that's really cool, though. So wait, what you were at the um, uh, that was what, which airport you're at? Well, I flew out of L.A. because I stayed at another week oh you were there a whole other week yeah well about five more days yeah holy smokes yeah, yeah well we, I, I was meeting with other riders and people you know got uh, it for, for my seed project so oh, i did right 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 we, but i mean like so i i came back from well i stayed in indian wells uh outside of indio right for the salt and test salt and sea test and then i i went to um Oh, what was the name of the Covina or something like that? I can't remember the name of the place, but yeah, I was trying because Covina and Covina. West, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was West Covina. I was somewhere in that area. Cause I had people that I was going to be meeting in Burbank and Pasadena and LA. So it seemed like the most reasonable place to usually I stay in Anaheim. Um, but still everywhere I went, it was like an hour to an hour and a half or two hour drive. And some of the people I had to meet that were down in Rodondo beach and Newport beach. So I was like, Oh my God. And I'm talking to these people, I'm like, how in the world do you do? He said, first of all, the guy, my friend is like, nobody does what you do. <laughs> you know, everybody finds a place that they move close to where they're going to be, and they don't go much more than a half hour. Nobody does what you do. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know how else you could. It's just too crazy out there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing. I, again, I I thought it was a fluke when I when I first started running into people. Honestly, I honestly thought I had misunderstood the security guard from Atlanta, you know, a while back and, and some of these other people. But between the cashier at the vegan place that we ran into, I mean, again, what are the odds? Uh, and of course, our little celebrity tour, the thing that we did and some little small thing. Remember, I'm up on an island up in the northwest of, of Seattle, you know, a, a really rural place. And um, this this construction guy that I as I was walking across this lawn, and um, this construction guy was just staring at me. 
uh, you know, young guy, maybe, I don't know, 30, um, Hispanic. He's staring at me. And, and, and I go, I finally just stopped. I go, what? <laughs> he goes, he goes, you're, you're Mark Sargent. I'm going, oh, no. <laughs> I go, I go, and he goes, dude. He's like running up to me. I'm just going, oh, God, he's going to be. And he was an Eric Dubay fan at one point, And he just started apologizing to me. He starts saying, man, I'm so sorry for writing all those bad things in the comment section about you. And it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because I didn't think you were real. I thought they were what everyone said about you. It's like, what? And he's going, to, he, and then he's like, can I take a selfie? <laughs> so he pulls out his phone and he's taking, he goes, wow, this is so cool. I was like, really? You're absolutely serious. And yeah, I mean, if, if it extended that far out into the middle of nowhere, then uh, it's it's everywhere. It well, is. Yeah, it's, that's like I said at the beginning of this uh, this segment is are we reaching a tipping point? Yeah. And you were saying something about uh, Google Analytics passing Trump. <laughs> yeah, and then they stat squished us the, the, within a week after me saying that. That was horrible. Yeah, but for a brief span until they decide, because I, I don't think they were very happy with me making a video that was literally <laughs> titled that we caught the president. Oh. And then the Space Force, Trump's Space Force thing oh. dropped news wise, oh. and then Trump right. went up in interest in Googling. Yeah. Space Force. Yeah. But yeah, we, we're, we're tracking, yeah, we're tracking ridiculous amounts, and, and everybody knows it. I mean, uh, look, at, look at all the verified channels when you type in Flat Earth now. Beforehand, if you, even a year ago, you wouldn't have had ABC News and BuzzFeed and BBC and all these you know, giant channels. And now uh, the, the top two pages are nothing but. Uh, you know, these massive, massive channels because everybody knows. I mean, all these other channels, they search for what's trending and Flat Earth isn't going away. As a matter of fact, it's getting weirder and cooler. I mean, heck, that thing, what, it was two days ago, not even two days ago, the 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 Bachelor uh, Bachelorette show where one of the contestants admits oh, the season hasn't even really started. He says, oh yeah, by the way, I'm a Flat Earther. What? And, yeah, yeah, look it up if you get a chance. Uh, good, looking, good looking black guy. I think he's like 26. And nice. uh, yeah, and he's catching all sorts of hell and people are so now you've got again, it's polarizing. So there's some people saying he should be thrown off the show because he's obviously crazy. And <laughs> at the same time, it's like, OK, or is this genius? Because now yeah, it's genius because the, the amount of people are going to be because, you know, those those shows are like yeah. super gossip shows oh, and fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and well, yeah. and choreographed. So now, will she when she sits down over some candlelit dinner? Will she? she of course, she's going to bring it up. It's it's the most interesting thing that's going Can for this guy. Can she win them back to the ball? Yeah, it's <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Unless you go back to the globe, I don't think you really have a chance for the finals. Right. And it's like you know who gets the rose in this case. But it was amazing. It was like, and you know, lots of people picked up on it. And it also shows you, by the way, why it's still so dicey for anybody in any sort of position or of high profile to come out because the social media does still descend on them in whatever form. And in this case, it was Twitter. Yeah, but, you know, every time one of these outlets does a this is why we believe the Earth's a ball or right. a globe, right. every time they do one of those videos, they prob- it's, I, I wonder if there's a, a stat ratio out there somewhere because I, I bet you every time – they show one of these videos, they convert another thousand people. to. I agree. I agree because Cause they're so bad. Well, not even that. I think that because it's been settled long ago, we live on a globe and that's what we were taught in school. Any normal person who knows nothing about flat earth, when they see a story talking about, this is how we know why we live on a globe would say, why are they talking about this? <laughs> why and is this that question? Would, yeah, that would make me want to look into flat earth. Exactly. The, what's happening here? Yeah, but yeah. they're so bad, though. I mean, I watch some of these. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is your argument. I mean, it's, right. as, it's as bad as the well, you can make a 90 degree triangle on a ball. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing. S- that proves it's a globe. Like what? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that lose that loses people right away. It right. would be light all of the time on Earth. All the time. There'd be no time zones. <laughs> uh, seasons don't work. Yeah, I know. But again, yeah, it, it, any publicity is good publicity still, <clears throat> excuse me, where they, uh, they they put out the arguments, but they don't have anything. You know, they're simple. We've we've heard them a million times. And it, uh, the average person well, look at the um, the, the Shane Dawson video that came out. That thing got 12 million hits wow. in, a, in a week. That and, was pretty amazing video. Actually. It was amazing. Yeah. It was the, the mainstream person, Shane Dawson, a YouTuber who has two channels, um, 
and he's super popular, right. that gave the best mainstream lay person's explanation, his brother anyway, who he interviewed, yeah. of right. Flat Earth that I've ever heard. Right. Dude, the editing was outstanding. And from what I understood, and I, I don't mind, I can say it. It's not, a, it's not a secret. I talked to his brother. His brother called me. And, oh, yeah. And he said, oh, yeah. He goes, when's the next time you're going to be down in, in Los Angeles sometime um, after uh, the second week of July? Because I'd like to do a project with you. You know, some what? sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He called me. And initially, when I got the voicemail, it's like, oh, crap. They're going to try to strike me. Because I, you know, I grabbed 20 oh. minutes of this thing. It's like, oh, man. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, uh, he goes, hey, anybody can use that video. It's, um, he goes, in fact, uh, we were glad because the community latched onto it and was so positive because it was, it was, it was some of the finest 20 minutes worth of flat earth editing I've ever seen where it was just nonstop, you know, boom, boom, boom. Let's go after NASA. Boom. Let's go after science. Boom. You know, don't believe anything you hear. And, uh, the, and, yeah, it's so I'm going to have to deal with with them eventually. But I think of the the people out of the 11 million people or 12 million that have watched that video so far on his side. Oh, yeah. Remember how many of them? And he didn't because, even have flat. because it was him. Yeah, yeah. How many? Yeah, because he he really came at it from okay, I'm going to pin this on my brother, but I'm not going to say that it's absolutely stupid. Because that's not what he's about, and uh, yeah, he he did more for the the recruiting than <laughs> than a lot of us have combined. You know, and at in, the in, end, he and his brother were saying something like, "But are we flat earthers?" Right. Well, well <laughs> and yeah. they, but you could tell in their laughter, the answers, yes, yeah. they are. Yeah, it was it was wild, and I never even I, I feel bad because you know social media is so broad. I had no idea who this kid was. Yeah, I didn't either. Not a freaking clue. It's like 13 million, <laughs> su- 13 million subs. Yeah, I know. And Candy, apparently her kids are listening to uh, to him. You know, it's 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 a, it's a younger group, definitely. Well, that's good, though. That's yeah. good because they've been so severely brainwashed, the young people. Right. It's nice that there's some, some opposites happening yeah. when it comes to people being awakened. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I think that the younger generation... Uh, are picking it up a lot quicker because we have to basically unlearn what we th- feel, what our senses tell us. Isn't right. that Yoda who said you have to unlearn, yeah, unlearn what, what you, you have, have yeah. learned? Yeah. Unlearn what you have learned. Yeah. Well, but also like our parents' generation, they, they are, they have this enormous badge of pride. We are the only generation of all of human history that put a person on the moon. Right. Right. So like, that's a huge issue for them. And of course our generation, I was a month old sitting on my mom's lap when my dad was taking pictures of the television with Neil Armstrong. So that's all I've known, you know? So, you know, most Gen Xers that's, that's been our life, but this next generation, I mean, they barely even had the space shuttle. Yeah. You know, so they don't have all that. And I think they're converting a lot quicker. Even the physicists, well, okay, two things. One was the U.gov thing, which came out. That, that, by the way, was the main reason National Geographic got involved. One was because they watched the trailer. But the other thing Justin admitted to me later was that they saw the article from U.gov for that British group, which did a census of, what, eight 9,000 Americans. And they found out that the 18 to 24-year-olds, a lot of them were on board with this thing already. Even wow. though they weren't really making videos, it was like uh, a third, a third of them were, were already on board. And that freaked science out because they yeah. had no explanation for it whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, that that was amazing. And the other part, I absolutely forgot. I don't I don't even know how I started that. Uh, we're talking about the generation and the, the younger people. Generation younger Generation people. X, harder. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, real quick, because I know break's going to come up pretty, pretty soon. And that was if you saw it, you may have, Rob, was when um, Neil deGrasse Tyson was on his show, you know, that whatever yeah, show he Star does. Star Talk. Star Talk. And he had a couple younger physicists, you know, there, I think were working at NASA or no, no, they were just physicists. And they were saying, yeah, yeah, we've heard about the moon thing, you know, like it, it was a thing. Right. And he's like, no, no, no. It was a really big deal. And they're going, yeah. Because what have we seen? It's like, do it again. And these yeah. were full-blown you know, physicists, grad students. And she's going, look. She goes, it's been two generations. You yeah. go, go back. Do something. Because you're, you're resting on your laurels. And those laurels have been gathering dust for a number of years to where, like you said, look, the space shuttle program has been shut down for years. That, that isn't even a thing anymore. So what do you got left? You got, you got the ISS and what? That's it. So you're getting and the first man movie coming out and 
anything uh, Tom Hanks did. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But can't wait and to see. And Space what... Force. Come on. Don't forget uh, Space Force. Well, yeah, that's got to be their new, their big push now. Right. I saw some video. Uh, there's some, I think she was a 15 year old girl. This is going all over Facebook right now. That she's determined to be the, one of the first people on Mars. And like, that's her whole life right now is training to be a, a Mars. Yeah, you can train all you want. Even if it was real, there is no solution to the fuel problem. Yeah. Period. Even if it was real. Or the radiation problem. Well, yeah, the radiation problem too. But look, it's a w- literally a one-way trip if you even believe that part. And that yeah. is there is not enough gas to get back. So what are you training for exactly? And, and how would you be training? You should be trained just to stay alive. That's, that's basically it. It should just be survival training. Yeah. Starve yourself. Starve yes. yourself underwater. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be, that'll be that's, your that's test. That's as the- close as you're going to get because it would be miserable. if <laughs> Anyway. Listening to the True Truth Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. We're back on the Revolutionary Radio Project. I am your host, Rob Skiba, for the final half-hour segment of the broadcast. I'm talking with my guests, Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer. Uh, Mark, you mentioned something in a little while ago about a Flat Earth documentary. Um, right. Wh- tell me about that. I'm not really familiar with that. Oh, no, no. It's okay. Uh, so last year, uh, early last year, I was contacted by a uh, small production team out of Los Angeles. And they said, hey, we're thinking about doing a, a flat earth documentary. And I said, OK, you know, don't don't know much about it. And they're not flat earthers. And they sent uh, one of their guys up to Seattle to meet with me. And after spending a couple days with me and just kind of shooting around, uh, they said, you know what? Let's you know, they, they knew they kind of had something they could sink their teeth into. And so over the course of the next, oh, wow, nine months. They followed a whole bunch of us around. So what happened was uh, initially it started with me and then they got a hold of Patricia and they shot some stuff with her down in Houston. And then we I went to a meetup down in Pasadena with them and then they followed Nathan Thompson down there because he was you remember they're based out of Los Angeles. So they were trying to save whatever they could. Mm -hmm. They went out to Philadelphia they visited Globusters out in Denver. They visited uh, Jaron up in San Francisco. And then I went down and... Oh, and spent... Chris Pontius, the Flat Earth model builder, too. Right, Chris Pontius. Uh, that was just up a road. So that was a combination trip. So they came down when I went down to uh, to see Patricia. And then we, the, we went out to NASA to, to give them hell. And then after that, they went up to visit Chris Pontius up in Dallas, I believe. And then it culminated with them showing up at the you would have you would have recognized these guys, Rob. They culminated with them showing up at Raleigh. And then they they sent a full six man team to Raleigh and they shot the whole thing. There uh, they were there. And you for, were in it for a couple of seconds, Rob. Yeah, yeah, you were in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But you weren't you weren't doing too much because you would have known because they would have made you sign a, a release form oh. for it. You were you, you were sitting in the audience in the big auditorium at the uh, Flat Earth conference. Right. Oh, okay. I think. And, just, and, just listening. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And then uh, so what happened was they then spent so they wrapped it up. They they shot the rest of their footage um, at Raleigh and then went up to to back up to Jaron's place to because he was doing a nighttime laser thing and did it like a, a second thing because Jaron says no no I, I'll get it right this time <laughs> they went up for a second one 
And then they spent the next three months editing and went, finally released it. It's called Behind. You can look it up. Go to BehindTheCurveFilm.com the and the trailer's there and invited Patricia and I to go up to Toronto to the Hot Docs Festival up there. And we went and saw it twice. First was a private screening in their hotel room. When they weren't around, you know, they, they just hit play and, and, and left the room and let us watch it. And then the second time we saw it actually on the big screen at a theater downtown, you know, there was a whole bunch of documentaries playing with some flat earthers after uh, the well, the first time it showed on the big screen was when we went to a meetup and we were told not to go to that one because they wanted us to see it privately first. And then the second time it uh, it showed was when we saw it in the theater. And then there was a final showing after we had left. And that's where the the, the bootleg came from, the the hour, the, probably the worst bootleg in the history of bootlegs. Uh, <laughs> it was it was half the movie. It was shot in black and white to save memory. It was shot from the side because they were sending ushers through basically every 10 minutes because they were, they were worried somebody was going to try to rip it. And it was interesting. It was not and, – and Patricia and I have slightly um, – differing uh, uh, views on this but for me it was look uh, it was what i thought it was going to be a mainstream production covering the people of flat earth it was not a nuts and bolts movie it was not a is it or isn't it it, ga- it gave broad strokes okay here's here's what the the core concepts of flat earth are and then it, most of it was talking to flat earther you know the the, the six people they talked to you know um, bob nathan chris pontius uh, patricia me jaron and at the unless I'm missing somebody, and at the end, but but interspliced with small segments of they talked to uh, uh, a physicist and they talked to a general scientist and they talked to a psychologist and they even had Scott Kelly for five minutes, which yes. was a, very very surprising. Uh, to where he got out his famous line, and I have no doubt he was there for exactly this line. And told was, to say this line. By told the way. to say like... this line. It wasn't this off-the-cuff thing. It's like, oh, the first time I heard about Flat Earth, I'm pretty sure I was in space. And then the then <sighs> the shot goes to him doing a somersault. Yeah, space. doing a somersault in space. Um, <laughs> but the montages were excellent. It showed how, how big Flat Earth was, and uh, I thought it showed some wonderful momentum. But at the same time, it will be very, very polarizing because... Again, it, it is not a flat earther movie. It yeah. is not. You, you want to go there and you know do the flat earth cheerleader thing. You are not going to get that. Uh, it is. It is about as balanced as you're gonna you're gonna get. And of course, flat earthers want total victory. Some yeah. in the community of flat earth said, "Wait a minute. This is about people. It's about personalities and relationships that everyone's formed. And it's right. not about you know curvature tests, et cetera, et cetera." That's right. It isn't, but that's no. not the movie they set out to make. It is the movie that they set out to make, which is about people. Right. And there will be other movies made, I am certain, that have curvature tests and math and science in them. Yeah. And so, you know, this, no this one should a, worry. This was a, 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 Patricia's title is probably better for us, which was, you know, the, the Flat Earthers Next Door. I which suggested was... <laughs> it, but they picked behind the curve which i just don't like (laughs) which i still think is a great trojan horse name because it makes the people coming in feel like oh okay we're gonna go make fun of some flat earthers and that was not the case it showed flat earthers as a very kind intelligent uh articulate group and that are that are dedicated and that's you know and and so it in the question that almost came up always when 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 they were either on stage or when they were talking to the producers and director during you know afterwards which was the first question always gets hey are you guys flat earthers and of course you know it's like no 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 we're we're not flat earthers but that's not what it's about it's it's about you know and, and daniel the director daniel uh, clark he was really good at saying look it's about how you shouldn't talk about a great year to do this uh, how you shouldn't go after people based on their beliefs you shouldn't just label them and, you know, it's like flat earthers are not not insane. And that's what we're trying to show here. You know, they're good people and they're people probably, you know, again, walking around with you and you just don't know it. OK, so you guys have probably seen it. The uh, Robert Sungenis video he yes. just put out uh, today. I did. I think it was I today. Mm-hmm. Um, it was today. He's it's apparently written us. If anyone wants to see it. Yeah, it's yes. not on YouTube. So this is – he's recently published, uh, I think it was a 730-something page book, Flat Earth, Flat Wrong. Right. And um, I, I watched the, 
the whole it's like an hour and a half presentation he did and i'm going you know what he he actually yeah i don't agree with him on a lot of what he said but i think he did a a fair job of saying you know flatters there's look you guys you you can't just write them off like it it's you know, to write a 730 page book you you've actually got to do some research right and so you know i applaud him for that that he apparently has at least taken some time i, I don't there's some things I'm like, really, dude, you're still saying the earth is rising like a disc nine point, whatever for gravity. I'm like, nobody believes that. <laughs> like, Even the flat earth society, whoever they are, don't believe that. Yeah. I don't know anybody who believes that. And yet that's what they always plot. You know, flat earth say gravity is because the disc of the earth is flying up and what? So he still has some of those things, but other things, you know, he, he would say things like well you know that they actually do have a point here you know uh, yeah. but then then the inevitable but comes but you know uh, you know i this is interesting to me yeah. that he's he, here's a guy you know the principal which i think is a f- outstanding film and frankly the guy owes me royalties for the amount of people i've sent his way to download it <laughs> <laughs> um but he's got this book out, and you know that, that's going to be making its rounds. You're going to hear a lot more of that. Has he right. come to you to? I've been approached for a debate. Have you? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I have a little bit of an inside track on this, because okay. Because I, I feel bad in some ways because I really haven't told a lot of people. But initially, because Patricia and I have a mutual friend that he knows, and you, you know, I'm talking about Brian up in Canada. Me? Patricia. Patricia. Oh, oh yes, I do definitely. Oh yeah, so no, it's right. Didn't mean to yes. play. So uh, he put uh, Robert and I in touch with each other early on when he was when he was building this book, and he and I exchanged exchanged some not necessarily heated emails, but they were pretty detailed. You know, he mentions like, oh, that. Yeah, yeah, he does. So did you make it into the bookmark? <laughs> oh, the yeah. oh, yeah. I made it into his book enough to where I, when I searched for my last name, because he only sent me the first 100 pages, uh, I said, and it showed up, I think, 40 times in the first 100 pages. I'm going, okay, I'm in trouble. So, because he asked me at the end. So after this exchange, we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I, you know, I'm not going to change my story. I say the same things I always do. And at the end, he's going, and I, I, I wasn't going to say no. He, he said, hey, can I use any of this email correspondence in my book? Mm. I said, oh, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, I treat everything like it's recorded anyway, including this. So mm. why why wouldn't I? And then and but I didn't think anything of it. I mean, I knew that he was mad about, you know, the Flat Earth community was started taking that uptick when uh, the principal came out and he was saying, oh, we were doing it deliberately, deliberately to, to submarine him and all that. But I didn't honestly think he was going to cr- crank out. A that book. is so crazy because I know he and his partner uh, Rick, whatever. Yeah. that's their mantra right now. The flat Earth was brought out to discredit. I'm like, are you kidding me? Easily fifty percent of the revenue that they've got and the popularity they got has come as a result of flat Earth. He was of on course. Jaron's show, Robert. I know. I mean. He well, knows he's any. By the way, he's not dumb by any stretch. No. He can he can make outraged stuff uh, claims all he wants. But the point is, is he wrote this book in a hurry. And he wrote a lot of pages in a really short amount of time, and that's because he knew. Uh, and I'm sorry if he's listening and he disagrees, but I don't think he's going to. It's like, look, he knew that that flat Earth is the new hotness, and he wanted to get in on that. It's yeah, like, you know that's, that's a funny thing is people are always accusing me of doing this for the money, and I don't have a single thing for sale. Sure. Everything is free. Everything. I don't it's sell all anything. Free. And I don't like, even oh. have an item. <laughs> even they're if like, it's like, oh, these guys are just doing it for the money. And he comes out with a book, seven hundred page, and it's a hundred and something dollars for this book. Are you the serious? Over, yeah, his book, his hardcover, oh, is over a hundred dollars. I forget what, what the exact amount, but it was over a hundred dollars. Wow. So where is the the outcry? You know, for. for yeah. his, as when it comes to the money issue. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Which so, I don't think is a problem. I think if people want to make a living doing no, I, earth look, or conspiracy I, I'm a or self cool. Yeah, I, I get it. But yeah. you know, the amount of people that have gone psycho on me, you know, about this, you know, for money, I'm like, I don't ask for money. I don't have any products for sale. All of my stuff's for free. What the heck are you talking about? Right. And then this guy comes out with the anti flat earth thing and his book's over $100. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. It, again, he's he's hitching his his wagon up to ours, which is fine. I, I was like, look, in in some ways, look, you're you're helping our metrics, which yeah. is fine. And if you want to take an opposing view, great, fantastic. 
I uh, wish that he could see clear to work hand in hand with flat earthers. Keep his beliefs. Let us have ours, sure. but uh, work together to destroy the the heliocentric deception. Right. Yeah, there was a lot of things I've been reading. I've been trying to catch up on this guy, so I've been watching stuff of his online and reading anything I could find. And we agree on a lot of things. Sure, actually, uh, sure. You know, and you know, it, it, to the point where he even questions the moon landings, and, yeah. and acknowledges that you know NASA's got their issues and problems. Then he goes ahead and says, "What well, the pictures? You know, the pictures are." You know. It's yeah. still good, but I mean, he's he's, cl- <laughs> he's close. I I when uh, you know I watched the principle, uh, and when I saw it, it's like okay, you know, we both believe that the the Earth is the center of the universe. You just haven't you haven't taken that final step and shrunk it way way down. You know, you still believe in a universe. That's <clears throat> that's where yeah, shrunk stopped. the universe way down. But yeah. uh, like he's also sh- he's applied the circumference of the ball to the flat Earth. I keep hearing him saying that the you know, the flat earth map has a circumference of 25,000 miles. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Right. Any flat earth map that I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of, of the traditional circle azimuthal equidistant map is that the outer circumference is closer to 60,000 miles, not 25. 25 would be the equator. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. The outer circumference has got to be mass- massive. Way bigger, so Way bigger. Because our equator is the same as their equator. Right. So... You know where he's coming up with us because because he's trying to because he believes well he's trying to combat the the issue of the firmament as a hard dome, right. and I've read a PDF that he put out and he's trying to go through the definitions of the words in Hebrew and English and and trying to make the case that the firmament is both hard and flexible and you can go through it, right. and and he's trying to back that by this idea that space actually is not just a vacuum of nothing it contains um, I don't know what you call it Planck units or something oh the, you know you know Max Planck the Planck is sure. like the supposedly the smallest measurable thing. And he describes them as spherical, like the atom. Right. Uh, but that, it, and I'd have to go back and read it, his exact wording. But he basically said, at this small scale, there's no space between them. I'm like, if you, it's spherical, dude, put four <laughs> balls together. You're going to have space between them. Right. How could you say that? At you any know? size. At any size. It's a, a ball. I don't care how big or small it is, right? right. But he's trying to say that that, that justifies, because he makes the case that in Hebrew, Rakia, it is hard. It is firm. It is a solid structure. Yeah. And yet he's trying to make a case for it being flexible and expansive and you could go through it and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it takes him like four pages to tap dance and try to explain how the firmament can be, can still be space. Right. I'm, I'm going, wow, dude. Maybe Seriously. like a, um, a, a soft contact lens that's like permeable, but it's still solid, kind of. Ooh. Well, can, contact he lens on, earth. <laughs> he, he, contact well, lens earth. It's new, he's like, new well, thing. how can the firmament be on one hand be hard, and on the other have the birds fly in it? And I'm like, dude, are you like sitting in a room? <laughs> you know, I mean, how, do I have to explain this to you? Yeah. You, you know, you have advanced degrees. I have to explain this to you, really? I think he knows what he's talking about makes no sense, but he knows his audience doesn't really get it. So he can say things like that, and people will just say, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah. I'm well, calling remember, it sci ba- sci babble. Science. Yes, babble. yeah, that's a good way to put it. He also can't. You can't expect the man to abandon his life, his life's work. I mean, how much time did it take him to make that freaking movie? And you know, all of a sudden, flat Earth comes out. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> It's like, what do you do if you're him? I mean, do you really just like tear it up? Do you like just trash your yes. own office? Yes. Well, uh, yes, of course. Not, <laughs> that's, that's pretty like humbling. The, like I've always said, if Earth turns out to be a globe, I'm going to be the first one standing up saying, wow, I was wrong right. about flat Earth. I right. mean, sure. I, you know, I don't have a problem. If, in fact, it would be, my life would be a hundred billion times easier if oh, I would just do that. Dear. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm speaking right. of big numbers, Mark, uh, you and I just missed out on a million dollars. Do you realize that? Uh, did they up it to a million? They really? upped it to a million dollars. I think it's the Truth <laughs> Channel or something like that. Is the YouTube? Because they, they have a million dollars now. 
Yeah, he's trying to say that he knows some very wealthy people and he has sponsors. Whatever. And Tell us the sponsors. The, yeah, the challenge started with a $100,000 challenge for Rob Skiba and Mark Sargent. And this idiot, he goes, you know, go to the Japan and take a picture of the ice wall. I'm like, do you even know where the Japan is <laughs> on either map? You freaking moron. Mm-hmm. I, I should charge a guy $100,000 just to educate him on where the Japan is. The Japan. But it went up to a million, and we had uh, – last I saw – I just saw the video today. It says, you have five days to accept. <laughs> you have five days. Five days. <laughs> One million dollars. <sighs> but because we didn't accept, that means we don't really believe. Right. Right. Yeah. They, well, who knows? Maybe he's trying to – You know, he'll, maybe – I don't, I don't think any media is – Two million? Yeah, too bad. No, I, I mean, you get to a point where you hope that media picks up on it if you're him. I just don't see him doing it. Uh, they, they like the taste of your stuff, like the Bachelorette. So <laughs> that's, that's way more interesting uh, from their standpoint. You know, I want to add something that's off the topic we're on now and goes back to the topic of the Salton Sea before I forget, because yeah. I know there's not too much left of yeah. your show, Rob. And it has to do with the Salton Sea event, which is happening on the 28th of this month, which is June 2018. And if you want to go and participate or help out, I have an email address that people can uh, use to email the people that are in charge of putting on the second test. And uh, that way you can, if you don't know where the Salton Sea is or how to get there, if you want time and date or how you can help, how you can volunteer and that. So everyone get their pens or pencils ready. And I'm trying to scroll through my text here to find it. I was, I was, I was prepared. Here it is. Here's the email. It's all run together. Flat Reality Earth Explorers at gmail.com. Once again, Flat Reality Earth Explorers at gmail.com. Anyone's welcome to come out. Those who believe in the globe, those who believe it's flat, come observe. Uh, everyone's welcome. And there are going to be people who are there uh, filming on both sides. They will have a laser target with a banner saying, if you can see this laser beam, the earth is flat. You can uh, pose in front of it to get a photo up. Um, and everyone who comes should bring their cell phone fully charged up so they can document what's going on. And they'll be collecting footage the whole time. And then afterwards, they're going to interview the various people who are there and find out how they feel about the experiment and ask each other's questions, ask each, ask each other questions. And they'll be doing live streaming from both sides of the Salton Sea. So that's the 28th of this month. Very cool. And if you guys are listening and wondering what everything we've been talking about, Jaron uh, did a live stream. I had my phone, and so I was showing everything from my perspective anyway on, on my phone. So you can – I think it was like three hours long, three or four hours of the, the previous one. So you can see what we're talking about, what happened then. So uh, do you guys have anything between now and um, the um, Canada conference? The I don't know now. I w- I was supposed that's to go. August. Yeah, that's in August. Uh, well, heck, I I'd, I'd forgotten that we're actually going to be <laughs> in a week. We're going to be back at freaking Salton. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know uh, between now and Canada. I don't know if there's is if, if there's anything coming up. I keep thinking I'm supposed to do something at the end of next month. Yes, but, you are. You're supposed to talk with uh, Shane Dawson's brother, isn't that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's like okay, now I got to make another trip. Well, okay. all of the time, what happens is you think, oh, I don't have a trip till August. Oh, I don't have a trip till November. And then, and then all of a sudden, something new happens, like, come to the Salton Sea in a week. And you say, yeah. of course, sure, I'll be there. Sure. Why wouldn't I be there? Even though I <laughs> swore I wouldn't go back. And now I'm I glad enjoy. to go back because we do want retribution. Seriously? All right. It's fine. <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of it's kind of dicey because it's just going to be hotter. And well, we're gonna. It will it, be hotter. We're, we're not true. gonna be staying though uh, the same duration. We're not gonna stay there till freaking noon. And they're doing it um, even before dawn. Well, what I'm saying though is, you know, even the week after we were there, it got to like 111. So it, the water itself has been heating up. Yeah. Yeah, I wish we were doing it somewhere else that wasn't the Salton Sea. However, yeah. that's where it was decided, and that's where it's going to happen. And, you know. I see this can succeed this time because we have 
all of the flat earth group there who are going to be taking measurements and making this thing so scientific that it will be, it will be documented to the T. Right. right. Wow. Speaking yeah. of documented, is Nat Geo going to the Denver conference? Do you know? No, they are not. Uh, they will release their story sometime either at the end of September or the beginning of October. Oh. Sadly, that's going to be globe, 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 globe. Yeah, and I and they were. I told them about the Canada thing at the very least, and they said, "No, we want to get this thing out sooner." Because remember, all the the production team uh, just shot all the footage, and then they sent it back to New York. They have nothing to do with the editing. They just get the raw footage and let them chop it up. So whatever they're going to release, it will it will not be kind. And but, but with this uh, Salt and Sea Part Two. Uh, the Revenge, coming up uh, on the 27th of June. Perhaps some footage will be put together in a quality packaged fashion and sent off to Nat Geo. And hopefully the one guy, our contact there, uh, who was there at the Salt and Sea First Experiment, will pass it along so that at the very least they can put a disclaimer at the end of their globe, 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 globe video from the first experiment and say the Flat Earthers did the test again and it showed the earth is flat it, at it'll, least the line right it'll only help us in the end because look the hungary test is the test of all tests it was mm -hmm. 100 documented 100 pages uh guinness was there to guinness book of world records was there to sanction it uh a big team and but do they have video of that yet have they are they yeah, making the video yeah yeah but it's it, it's still because it's such a long test it's not it's not snappy it's not poppy yeah. You know, it's not like what a professional production team would do, you know, where you're, you're, right. you, you condense it down to 30 minutes or less. It's a big video. So it's on There's, Globusters channel. And I think on seven, seven day truth seeker has part of it, but it's not a, it's definitely not a video where you can just sit down. I have five minutes. I'm going to watch the test. It's yeah. way too complex for that, yeah. but there is a PDF that you yeah, can. Uh, so I'm wondering okay. if they're going to take the time to, I mean, the PDF is great, but you know, if somebody needs to describe the PDF. I know. It should be narrated. Narrated. And, yeah. Do maybe. something. Yeah. Well, Rob and Mark. I'm yeah. No, I know. Karen, <laughs> Karen, could, Karen B. could do it. I mean, she's part of FE Core. She could oh, narrate the whole thing. Is. And she has a fantastic voice. She does. Wow. Here we are well, assigning tests to others who aren't here. How nice. There you go. <laughs> Karen, get on that. Chop, chop. Yeah. Well. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Uh, it yeah. was kind of a last minute thing, but um, you know, That's I always cool. enjoy talking with you guys and I'm sure we'll see each other and hopefully have some time to chat in Canada. Definitely. And then get ready for the big one in Denver. Yeah, yeah that that'll was... be fun because the media will see us coming this time. Yeah, the Canada one, I think there's only going to be like 150 people, but I think the Denver one is going to be pretty huge. Yeah. Oh, yes. So. Yes. All right, that brings us thank to the you, end Rob. of the broadcast. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming on again. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you guys for listening to the Revolutionary Radio Project. See you back next Wednesday. Good night, everybody.